I'd show you how I created this quirky image. I'm going to break it down into really simple pieces for you so that you can see how easy it is to create something like this. When you go through your magazines, I've stressed a number of times about anything that causes you to pause is something that you should rip or cut out. There's a reason why you like that image. And in this case, there was an image in W Magazine, and this is the one that I found it in. And this, is, this image has been kicking around in my stash for a year. This magazine was from November of 2016. And this is the image that I pulled out. Now this is a copy of it. I did not keep, um, I did not scan or keep a copy of the image. So I had to go online and I found it. But this is the image that started this piece. And what I really liked about this image was the eyes. They just totally got me. So I made this viewfinder so that you could see, and I'm going to just go in a little bit here so that you could see how those eyes translated to this. And I think, I think it's probably easy for you to see. But this was the thing that started my whole image on this. So I've been holding these eyes, like I said, for a year. And I've been trying them on different images until I got this coloring book. And when I saw this, what I liked about the images in here was there was a number of images that had wide set eyes. And I knew that that would be perfect for something like this because although these eyes are not necessarily wide set, I knew I had a pretty big span that I had to cover in an image. So I tried, auditioned this on several pieces, so I ended up using this one because look how far apart those eyes are. And I figured this would work just perfectly. So I auditioned it and I thought I could use it. The next thing I did was I made a copy of this. And I did that so that I could preserve the original. And my copy looked like this. And I placed the eyes on here. So there they are and I started coloring in. And I started coloring in the face and the eyes. And you can see that right across here, you actually have a line from your, where you place your image. And it's very hard to blend. If you have a magazine, unless you put clear gesso over it, it's very difficult to get a medium to stick to magazine. You can get some color transfer, but not a lot. Even using Prisma color pencils, I had a difficult time in trying to get that to color. So what I decided to do, because I couldn't really get this blended well, is make another copy. So I put this on my printer and I just pressed copy. And the image that you saw here is a result of that. So this is just a copy. And then I started playing with it. Now because this is all paper now. You don't have magazine here and, and photocopy paper or printer paper here. It's all one image, so it's very easy to blend. Even though I still have that line, in hindsight, what I should have done is put the eyes on and copied it right away, and then I probably could have blended a little bit better. But this is how it ended up. And for future, that's how I'm going to do it because it makes it super easy to blend because everything is the same material. Blend. And so I use a lot of colors of my Prisma pencils and these tend to be my favorites and I use them all the time. And I just start working the face. I add color here and there. If you have any kind of shadowing that's on your original, then you can go ahead and use that as your basis. Uh, in this case, there wasn't a whole lot of shadowing. So I sort of did it on my own. And I love to play with the eyes. That's one of my very favorite things to do. And so what I did was I colored in the eye, because there was really no color on this eye. As you can see, this just sort of looks black. Um, so I colored that in with a blue-green, and then I placed white 
on either side of that. And there in the image you can actually see a little better than on here where to place those. And then I just started adding pinks and oranges and yellows, greens, blues and just sort of all blending them together, highlighting areas around. Um, the eyebrows were already there so I just darkened those and then um, uh, did the lips a little darker red and there really wasn't much of a nose on this, just a little line. So I just sort of gave the idea of a nose by coloring it in with pencil right there. So applying your colors you want to use very thin layers and you can do some blending by also using thin layers or a blending pencil. So anyway I just colored these in and once I got the face to where I liked it then I started concentrating on this area and as you can see this is the area that I started working on and I just basically applied small black rectangles using my Prisma pencils right along here and then I went up and decided what I wanted to use for the horn or antler area so this was an area that I thought would work well right here and then on this side there really wasn't one but I made this area into the antlers and just continued that striping up. I also added just two little vines that one was from here and I took another one I think from here and just added them on there and she started to come together. So the next thing that I did was decide what kind of a body I wanted on it and the difficult part was I wanted to have a thin neck I knew I wanted to have that. I wanted that contrast between the larger head and a smaller body. So I decided that I cut this, I decided to cut it out so I followed the lines. Oh and one other thing, right here on the head I started playing with this image right along here trying to blend it and I couldn't, I didn't like the shape of the head and I didn't like the way it was turning out. So instead I decided to just round it. I followed basically this line from these two points and rounded it. And then I just cut out a piece of scrap paper and glued that on there like a little cap. So then I cut it out following all the things I had colored in and decided to find a body. So I went back to some of our collage sheets that um, we've been using previously and this is one that I showed you um, a couple videos ago called Going Postal. This one has a wide variety of pieces that you can use in all different ways. So what I ended up doing was using this as the body because it worked perfectly. I had a scrap piece of paper that I used for the neck and so when I cut this image down I just really cut the neck thin to about how I wanted it and then placed using a scrap piece of paper did that. Also I used this piece right here just to sort of break up the stripe and give it a little more interest and then this piece here is placed right down there. The Oddly Familiar came from the Borders and Bits collage sheet and I just did a tape transfer because I wanted the yellow of the paper to show through. So that was simple. I've shown you this before. Uh, I used scotch tape, placed it over it, put it in water and peeled off the back of the paper and then just laid it down. And then the wings came from our Woot collage sheet and there's those wings that I used right there. Her legs were a fishtail that I had. I keep a little basket on my desk of just odds and ends of pieces of paper, leftover pieces that I didn't use. And when I need a little something, I go to that and actually, I always find something that'll work. And that fishtail I thought was perfect. And then I had right here, this is a border that I had previously from one of our collage sheets and just added that. And that's pretty much how she came together. Um, and I just doodled around her. 
So it's really fun. What now that you've got a lot of the collage sheets, and there's even way more out there um, that you can get and just have fun with. But um, you know, use these pieces. You've you've bought the kits. You can print them out. You can use them for all sorts of things, and just look at the images and see what you can do. Now you could change up her mouth if you wanted to, or change up her nose. But instead, I just really highlighted. I used the colored pencils to really make the statement on her. So that's how she came about. Now I'm going to show you another one that I haven't shown you yet. And if you follow my Instagram or my Facebook page, you saw me with a bunch of papers and strips that I said I was trying something and was wondering if it was going to work. And it did work, and this is it. And it's just a small little book, and I will show you how to make this in another video. But what I really love about this little book, and I'm going to use it specifically for my collage because I like the size of it. Um, and I'll show you how to make that in another, another video. But this is another character that you've not seen yet, and I just finished this up. And let me show you how this one came together. This was the original image off Pinterest. And what I did was I flipped the image. No reason for you to do that. I just did it so it would be facing a different direction. And I brought this into PowerPoint, like I've shown you before, and I enlarged the head a little bit. And the reason I did that was I really wanted to, again, have that larger head. So there's the image. And then on the going postal again, I used this eye. And what I did was cut right, really framing the eye. I didn't do the eyelashes. I went right along that eye. And then I changed the color of the eye using, again, my Prisma pencils. Now this one, I didn't, it, this was a copy, and this was a copy, so I didn't have to worry about blending at all. So that's the eye, and I just put that right over this. The body came from the Wild Things uh, collage sheet that we had, and you can see that right here. And I cut off the neck and just put a little wider neck on here and filled that in. That was really simple. Whacked off the head, and I used the body pretty much as is. Going back to the going postal sheet, I wanted to change up her nose because the goal is really to have these images look different, really not recognizable in some ways. So I wanted to change up her nose. And so what I did was take one of these, which could be wings, it, they could be little, actually I was going to put them up here first, um, but then I decided I would try it as her nose. And so that's what I did, and all I did to create all of this was use a yellow Prisma pencil and then a black marker and just made dots, because I really wanted to emphasize it. This was a mouth that I found on one of our collage sheets. You didn't have to change it up, but I wanted to put a little something on there. And then I fringed her bangs. I made them longer than the original picture, as you can see here, they cut straight across. So I changed up her bangs, and then these came from right here. Again, that going postal. Really a great sheet. I actually had this hat on her for a little bit, this hard hat, and I still like that, um, but I ended up going that because I had an awful lot of yellow. And then that's pretty much it with her. I just did some highlighting around her, spent some time coloring up the eyes. And she's maybe not my favorite, but I do like her still. And I had a little punch here, so I just punched that out and made a little different earring for her. And I had some paper. And then in this book, what I've done is I've done a mix of paper. So I've got some of the paper from our kits. This is just magazine. This is tea dyed or coffee dyed paper. Um, I have, and again, that's one of our papers. I have some plain white paper. And um, anyway, so that's how I did. I just ripped a piece in half 
And I really wanted to sew this, but I did not want to drag out my sewing machine for one, one page here. So I had these rub-ons that look like sewing stitches, and I just put them along there. But I think it would be really cute to stitch before you know you actually put this on here. And again, I'll come back and show you how to make this book. It's really simple. Look how nice and flat it lays. You can make it as big or as little as you want. It has an exposed spine, and it's super. It's really easy to put together. So anyway, that's what I wanted to show you guys. I'll be back again uh, to show you how to make this, and probably the December flip will be coming up very shortly too. So I'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.